My wargaming experience has been the reverse. I didn't grow up with it. I discovered it when I was 23. I don't know what I'm doing. Everything I'm doing on cameras for the first time. What happened to make that switch? The, probably the biggest thing, biggest like discovery unlock was there's no such things as mistakes when you're painting minis, right? You're just paint, just paint is the answer. The perception is everyone knows how to paint. Everyone knows how to paint well, and I don't know how to paint. Therefore, that's scary and I'm afraid of it. So I was just outside and like I bumped into like the most random person ever outside the office. And it's Dave from Mini Wargaming. <laughs> uh, you know. He's yeah. been sitting on that intro all morning. Doesn't whether he did that intro when Dave came in. He did it live to me when Dave came in. That was our I'm all did. about the rinse and repeat. So it's <laughs> it's it's perfectly fine. It's all good. Efficient. Yeah, it's all good. Um but no, Dave, uh, absolute pleasure. I know you are obviously having a very fleeting moment here in the UK. Um and uh it's it's great that you can join us. So just a huge thank you as ever. Um, Pleasure. Yeah, it's good to have you. But obviously, um, if there's anyone watching that doesn't know who you are, and you should do, um, <laughs> who are you? What do you do? And um, why are you so amazingly famous in the industry? <laughs> amazingly famous. Yeah. One of the perks of being old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I suppose that's it, right? 16 years? 16 years, yeah. So myself, business partner Matthew, mm -hmm. started YouTube channel Mini Wargaming 16 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. 07, which is nuts to that's think about. Crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, that's absolutely crazy. YouTube was like one year old when we started. Yeah. It was pre-Netflix. Yeah. So, yeah, we just started making videos. We started with an online store uh, selling Warhammer, making videos, promoting it. No longer had an online store. And then continued with media yeah. and battle reports. And kind of just evolved with how everything evolved with the Wargaming tabletop community. Yeah, sometimes it's a little bit of hobby-related videos, but mostly evolved into gaming. So whether it's uh, Warhammer, uh, 40K, Age of Sigmar, also other tabletop games, but really it's, it's like casual gaming, right? So it's not competitive. Uh, we've, we've dabbled in trying to in the past, but we've mostly just been, okay, we just like the casual beer and pretzels type of game style where it's, all right, what do you got there? Um, I have no clue what you have. You have what I have. You know what I have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. I'll have fun. It doesn't matter. Things explode on the tabletop. It's all good. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think that's a good thing about the videos and the, and the channel in general. From 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 when I first watched, started watching it many years ago, like is that you, you, a lot of channels obviously go down the route of doing more competitive potentially, or have like that more that that side of it. But with with you guys, it is about that it, that entertainment and having those those fun games that are memorable. I think that's a really important part of of doing this as well. Um, so yeah, so I think that that's that's a credit to you and Matt and to the rest of the team, like Josh and everybody, for all the things that you've done in in nurturing the channel in that in that way. I think that's a that's a good way of approaching. I it. think it like lends itself the more casual style of gaming lends itself quite well to earlier youtube as well it youtube in general just felt casual more casual and yeah. you wanted to feel like you were watching friends and stuff right yes so it yeah. kind of helped with that yeah. i wonder if there was i suppose no one else was really doing battle report videos and things when you started right so was we were others we weren't around? the first to do it uh but we were the first to do it a lot mm -hmm. full time so we were we just, by virtue of the fact that we were a studio uh, producing many, uh, just there wasn't a, another channel to necessarily see at the time, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and we certainly weren't the highest quality or anything like that. We just evolved into our style of uh, many clips. We did in-camera editing. It was like, all right, um, instead of like spending 50 hours afterwards editing, let's, <laughs> let's just like, all right, let's do one dice roll. All right, it's five seconds. <laughs> Like this action, move this many, <laughs> five seconds. And so we'd have like 500 clips at the end of it. And it seemed to be good enough because that was actually feedback from the viewers. Like, hey, we want to see what's happening. We want to see why you're, why, why are you moving that rhino in front of that unit and doing that and disembarking this? And okay, well, we'll explain everything as we do it and go along. Yeah, so it was, it was fun. And it, many guests came in, right? So they would see the channel, we'd book games, they would come in, we'd play them. And so every game was different. So it'd be one of us and then playing against a guest. Mm -hmm. that would, come would it be like, I know it has been since, but in the early days, even was it like viewers that would say like, "Oh, I'm in the area or something." At first, it was just local. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah just our buddies that got into it. Uh, oh, what's this game you guys are playing? Oh, we'll play too. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. I know a guy who plays that. Bring him in. Nah, he's good. He knows how to play. <laughs> so yeah, let's play. I think that's good though because like the the engagement in the videos uh, between like the players yourself and obviously the person it's really natural as well because it's someone that's local to you that you know and that that maybe came to the shop or whatever the case may be like, I think that's a that's a that's almost like 
the best cradle for the channel to start from i think like you know having that kind of like really natural natural kind of like conversation and engagement in the videos i think that's what makes the video so interesting as well because it's not like it's, it's awkward or it's difficult because you know the person i think that's that's something that makes them really interesting as well yeah so and yeah. it's like is that's an exact replication of just what happens at local gaming groups anyway right yes like yeah. oh someone's brought their friends now oh the friend's really good like get them back or, <laughs> yeah. or don't get them back them actually. Yeah. <laughs> don't yeah. get them back unless i'm doing a double <laughs> yeah. yeah. um yeah. yeah yeah so that's probably i guess why people gravitate towards yeah. it so much fly on the wall they'd be like hey we feel like we're right beside you there as you were playing the game that was a common response yeah just because of the way we filmed it yeah yeah, yeah. do you find you get less of that response since the production value ramped up or do you think it still has that community I think Ew. it's still, well, it, we still get that because I think it's because of the filming style. We do, we still have the handheld, which we're just now evolving into more multicam. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, because it's like, here's the literal point of view of what I'm thinking. And the camera is like an extension mm -hmm. of your consciousness. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, I'm moving here, thinking about that, talking about that. So it feels like you're inside the head of the person playing. And then you get the reaction of the other pl player as that you're talking to them. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's this back and forth. It's right. cool that you managed to keep it even with the production value ramping up kind of thing. Yeah, I think, like, a, I think a lot of that is ha, has to do with just tenure, right? Because if we mm. tried that now, it, there's no way. No, you have to have such a high standard of quality mm -hmm. to penetrate the market of the viewership attention economy to even be loud in this space, mm. right? If you're brand new and you have no following, it, it has to be something unique and different. Mm. Yeah, you don't have the luxury of having a built-in viewership for years and years watching your videos, right? No, totally. Yeah. 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 So at what point, because I, I kind of know this, but yeah. I wasn't around, but at what point does Mini Wargaming and, and Siege start working together in any aspect? I think you've spoke about it before on other podcasts, we, we, but you, maybe you, a brief decade, overview. Yeah, about a decade. Like, so we've been going 10 years. Um and that would have been 2014. So if you started in 20, 2007. So you've been going probably about seven years then at that point, I'd imagine. So 2007, yeah. yeah. So then, yeah. So you've been going about seven years. Um, and obviously you, your channel had grown to the size that it had grown at that point. Um, I think the only other channel that I remember for that point was Striking Scorpion was the only other channel that I think was doing videos at that point. But they started, he started way later than you. And obviously it, it, he's just one person. Obviously you had a whole team at that point doing it. Um, but um, but uh, you put out a video you need help painting stuff basically yes. and that was like in the infancy that was literally when it was just me in the flat above the chemist and mm -hmm. uh and um i just thought look you know what i've been watching these guys for however long um i think i can paint okay ish <laughs> you know um i'll send you some pictures and and, and replied to the to the the sort of thing the video and the, the paint partner program that you put out and um unfortunately like you came back to me and, and then then from then onwards we kind of like worked on quite a few things for you which is and mm -hmm. obviously a siege has grown not myself but other team members have then worked on stuff for you as well um and i think it's been quite natural obviously just obviously when you've needed something we've obviously done it for you and mm -hmm. you've done a few videos for us and stuff i think it's been quite an organic and natural kind of like working kind of partnership i think and i think that sometimes they're the, they're the kind of the best working partnerships you can have um we complement each other too right because uh, yeah we need armies painted yeah yeah, we need to paint too. armies so yeah <laughs> <laughs> great yeah, yeah but, you know, that's so so um so yeah that, that was always good my favorite thing i think that we've done for you is probably and i think you're gonna you'll hopefully you'll agree uh, the, the chaos gods will be disappointed if you don't but i think the brass scorpion was probably one of one of the one of uh one of my favorite things i think we've done for you yeah i think um, that that might that might do it yeah, yeah that might do it yeah, yeah. I, 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 my I, leg. I heard that you might like corn and chaos a little bit but yeah Fine. convince but, me uh, that's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah uh yeah I'm surprised the the blood angels in you didn't pick the uh what was the custom service was it was it gabriel, 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 gabriel seth yeah. and, and sanguinor yeah i mean yep. look that yeah they are great and as much as it pains me to say it i i, I have that it's still red and it still hits things close hits things in close combat so it's kind of like a brother from uh, from another mother. Like, kind I think of, kind it, of, it so. speaks to <laughs> it speaks to how much you love uh, corn and chaos stuff that you're willing to pick. Just just a brass scorpion over like these custom <laughs> characters. <laughs> yeah, no, but no, it's it's been quite it's, it's been really nice working with you over the years. You know, and I, I'll say this now, and I've said it on you know we've spoke on several shows together before, and I, I every time I every time we get the opportunity to, I'll always say it because. I always like to acknowledge and always like to to make sure that it's it's known that Siege and everybody here and all the stuff that we do, 
we wouldn't be here if it weren't for you and Matt and for the videos and things you've done for us in those early days. And I mean that sincerely from the bottom of my heart, uh, you know, um, it, it really gave Siege the, a massive springboard to, to build where we are today. It's, it's permanently, unfortunately, Dave, you're part of the foundations of this business. You, you just have to accept it, you know. <laughs> you got um, chaos in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, um, but, um, but yeah, like, you know, it, 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 it really did give us an opportunity to get, reach a much further field of, of, of potential customer. And, um, and as I said, you know, it is, it is part of what makes Siege what it is. And, and really, hopefully, the, the continued growth and success story that Siege has become and, and that I'm truly humbled by every single day, you know. And, and you know, it, it, it really meant a lot. And I just always like to acknowledge that because I think it's really important to appreciate and respect the things that helped you. You know, I think that's really, really important. Um, so, yeah. Well, thank you for mentioning. I mean, that's incredibly kind of you to say that, right? Like, or just to say it in general. Yeah. yeah. And I think, honestly, though, like, uh, as a matter of fact, to add on to what you're saying, it's, it was your, your, your quality of your work, right? That did it, right? Because if you're, if you're a painter and you did a commission and it's like, it wasn't good, we're not going to do it again, mm-hmm. right? So it's like, yeah, so it's, it's the hard work that's paid for itself, right? Like, you did it. Yeah, no, I, I yeah. get that. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 that means a lot. But yeah, it, I cringe a little bit, not because of what you're saying, just because where my painting was then to where it is now, <laughs> to what we produce now as a business. You know, I mean, the we we done the um, uh, the green, uh, the green. Oh, you're talking about the green runes? Yeah, the green runes. I, you know, I always it's Sen- Sen- chapter? Sentinels of the Forge. I always remem- the- I always remember the name. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, the Sentinels of the Forge chapter Marines that we done for you. Easter egg. Uh, first things in your uh, in your Instagram. That's that's what it is. If you scroll back way back in your Instagram, it's, it's really far. It's like, yeah, there's the first posts. Yeah, some of the first yeah. posts. Oh, really? Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. Really? I, didn't yeah. know, I didn't know that. Yeah, either. some yeah. of them yeah. are. Yeah, some of them are. They're really far back. Yeah. Yeah, like it's it's like pre pre you got your new style of photos. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? Like the, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's like yeah. yeah, you want to see what the basement. Yeah, looks like. and if you want to do that, there's like ten thousand <laughs> posts. So good luck scrolling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, but, I was uh, curious one day. I'm like, <laughs> what has he got there? Wait for the load too. Like it took a number of minutes. Four hours later, you know. <laughs> like it's like, yeah, but um, should have dropped a comment like finally made it, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, it means a lot to me that you kept them up, yeah, 100%, right, yeah. right? Because it's like you know, there's certain standard of quality that you want your post to be at sometimes, right? Yeah, and it's I think like, that's a combination of having the time to scroll back for that like, 10,000 maybe posts there's that too, yeah, yeah, and, and yeah. also, and, yeah. And, and, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's fair. That's fair. I, I always look at stuff like that. Like, the, I always look at stuff, like, especially with miniature painting. I always look at like past photos, like your first models, and all those kind of things. There's like a moment in time, and I think it's a really good way to nod to nod back to where you came from. I think, I think, like, I understand totally what you're saying. You want to show your best work, and especially like maybe as a business or whatever, you want to show your best work and stuff. But like, but um, looking back to where you came from and the roots and like the heritage of where you come from, I think is still really important. And that's partially the reason why, and maybe because I don't want to scroll 10,000 posts back, but, but, um, but <laughs> I think that's, I think that's a, a massive part of it, but no, like, yeah, I, um, they, they were great to work on and it's nice, I suppose, for, for, to, to know that from the very early days of the working relationship, uh, for me, as, I, I, I like to still be able to have contributed to the, to where we're at now, if that makes sense. And being able to do that, I suppose is, is, is kind of like, helps just make the relationship that we've had over the last X amount of years just a bit more natural rather than, oh, it's a purely business thing. It's just, you know, we've done something really helpful for you and you got to show them on the channel and play some awesome games, you know, and I think that's the nice thing about it. So, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. nice. Um, yeah. We did want to, we kind of alluded to it before we started recording, but we wanted to talk a little bit more about painting in general in this episode because I think it'd be good for the listeners and it might be good for, for you to get to, to, flex some painting knowledge uh over over gaming knowledge um but before we do that Mm -hmm. do you want to give a little overview on ravage star and let everyone know about that how that's very kind thank you so much for saying that no honestly like i've got to say this i was blown away by the game found like you and and dave um, you and matt should be over the moon with what you've you've created and what you've done like the campaigns that you've done like um we were just speaking about this this morning like we was going through and looking at the miniatures in the campaign it's absolutely like incredible the one the standard of the models and two how crazy it is to have achieved such a high goal for the the backing goals on there in such a short period of time as well it's incredible thank you yeah thank yeah you, yeah like it's 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 it, you know honestly like the models are really cool um and, and as i said like 
you can see when the amount of hard work and effort that's been put into creating all the stuff that you've got that goes with it. Um, I will chuck in a, a little plug that we have obviously painted some models for that. Obviously, we did a couple of things for you, but um, couple but, uh, armies, couple of armies, <laughs> yes. yeah. just a few things, just yeah, a few yeah. things, just a few <laughs> yeah. things, yeah. Um, but um, but yeah, if you want to say a bit more about it, obviously, feel free to feel free for anyone who doesn't know obviously what it is, feel free to to, to tell us about it. Sure, thank you. Uh, yeah, so Ravage Star is a tabletop miniature war game that we are developing, and it has. It's the goal is to actually provide a game for people who haven't played a game, a mm -hmm. tabletop game before. So there's certain barriers to entry that might uh, prevent some people. Like for instance, assembling a miniature, right? It's like, if you've never done that before, mm -hmm. you've not grown up with it, it's like, ooh, what's this? Or it's like, ooh, what's that? That looks complicated, mm -hmm. right? That looks like the best thing in the world to someone, or I don't know if I would ever enjoy doing that because it looks so hard, mm -hmm. right? So we actually got some community feedback for that. Like, okay, so the feedback is, majority of people actually don't want to s assemble their miniatures they don't mind painting that's a different story mm -hmm. right but it's the assembly part so it's like okay what if we made assembled miniatures and then you can just start playing right away out of the box right so you buy from your store play right away so it's a bit like a hybrid of like a board game yeah. and also a war game, and it, a war game. it combines because you don't you don't set monopoly up and go just hang on a sec i just need to build the battleship you know <laughs> like you know right. so like, yeah. yeah 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 exactly a hybrid yeah. it's actually a good way yeah and yeah. that that once again was community driven right so it's like uh what, what do you guys want what would you want right so get gathering a lot of feedback from the community and we just collated that and kind of put all of that into the game right or the feel of the game as well even the box art it's like it's a box you'd want to keep not a box you want to chuck you want to actually display it on your shelf it's default storage in the box itself, or you could have it on display. You have, you have it as the option. But the feel of the game, which is a uh, credit to Matt for this, because Matt is, he's the gaming genius, right? He knows all the armies. He knows the rules. He knows your army better than you. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, who, and he's, he's written over 60 narrative campaigns, which are custom rule sets based off the Warhammer rule set. So it's like, yeah, I think he's the right guy for the job to make, <laughs> make this rule set, right? And also for it to be community feedback where it's like, all right, here's the alpha rules. What do you guys think? stress test this a bit okay give it back all right tweak it a bit all right so yeah and then i i played what he made and i had a lot of fun playing the game and i'm on the perf perfect litmus test for am i gonna have fun playing a game are people gonna have fun because when it comes to learning rule sets it's like uh <laughs> right like there's this brain fog that happens right <laughs> and so typically when i learn games it's my buddies who teach me the game yeah yeah right it's not me like truly like absorbing what I'm reading and like pulling out my hair. It's like, oh, how do you do this? Oh, that's how you do it? Okay, awesome. How long did it take you to read that? Oh, five minutes? Okay, you just explain it in five seconds. That's excellent, <laughs> right? So much better way in my opinion. It's like, all right, show me the game. If I like it, people will probably like it because if I can like it and learn it and know how to play it, most people can, right? So yeah, Matt did a good job with the rules and still is, still in development for that. And then the lore as well. So there's multiple factions. There's Veil Touch, which are very chaotic in nature, mm. right? Obviously, it's inspired by the things that I you personally don't. like, yeah. <laughs> right? So um, uh, props to the team of artists who sculpted the miniatures and uh, uh, co the concept art and all that. It's like, Dave, what do you want to make? I'm like, well, the chaos. <laughs> like, immediately, it was something chaos, but obviously, we can't do, no, yeah. right? It, it's like there's, a, there's so many um, clear knockoffs clear proxy miniatures that are like, all right, let's tweak 2% just to get away with it. Mm. But it's like, no, no, um, we want to make something unique. And so I spoke to a number of different uh, designers who do make proxy miniatures who haven't had any sort of legal issues, mm. right? Uh, and I said, how do you do it? What have you done? Right. <laughs> um, you are successful with this. I like what you make, mm. right? Well, uh, if you were to give any advice, what would it be? Mm. Right? And one is, well, just design a mini from scratch. Don't actually copy something. Like, make it from scratch. Yep. Okay, well, that seems obvious, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, it, but it doesn't. Mm. When you're thinking, I want to make this, but I don't want to make this. It's like, no, don't even think about that. Just, just make it from scratch. It's a hard it's a hard battle, like emotional battle, I suppose, because you, everyone knows that you love chaos. Like, I think it's, you know. It's in the blood, I, mean, I can't we, help I, it. <laughs> I address the set specially for you. So, 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 um, you know, but... I think it's a hard battle because obviously you love it so much. So much. And, and you know and, what? Good luck taking it out. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Good luck taking the corn out of it. It's never going to go. Right? Like, I yeah. can't escape it. Let's get to it. 
<laughs> one of the things <laughs> that I really liked from like the miniature design standpoint as well is the the proportions and the scale is kind of just slightly different as well, which inherently makes it feel very different. Yeah. Even though it's sort of that homage to to what you like. That was another. Uh, that was another recommendation. They said, "Don't make it the exact. Don't put it like make it make it something new and unique. So if it's mm. slightly bigger, okay. If it's slightly smaller, okay. And so we went that route too. So it's like, all right, make something from scratch. Make something proportionate. It doesn't have to be the exact of what you would think it would be replacing on the tabletop. Mm -hmm. Sure, people are probably going to do that anyway. But if they let's take that out of the picture for a minute, it's just a standalone mini. Like you could use it as a Dungeons and Dragons character if you really wanted to, right? Mm -hmm. Or just paint it, just collect it and paint it. And then I think they look like great fun to paint as well. Because I don't yeah. I don't play 40k at all. I just buy models purely to paint. And from just a painting standpoint, like just going through and looking at all those miniatures, I, I think any one of those you could pick out as just a standalone figure to paint on its own and still have a good time. Thank you for saying that because the number one criticism was just way too much detail. That was the number one criticism, right? It's like, well, what do you think about the models? Yeah, that's great. Uh, I, too I, much. I don't necessarily think that's so much of a, a, an issue, like especially for when you're, you're trying to get people who haven't done this before into it. Yep. There are a lot of ways, like with miniature painting, there's lots of ways of executing it. If you're going to paint it to like a like a, a competition quality or like a high box art quality or something like that, the more detail obviously increases the workload and the amount of stuff you need to do. But there's lots of techniques and ways of applying paint onto a miniature. Like you've got slap shot, you've got dry brushing, you've got, you know, overbrushing, you've got all these things that the extra details, it makes painting very quick and easy for that individual. So they get that instant win of transformation from plastic to something they can put down and play with, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, it totally depends, in my opinion, the way that you're approaching the painting of the miniatures. Like, if you are doing it to a high end or whatever, then obviously more detail just means it's going to take you ages. You more know, time. but but in um, another sense, though, it kind of holds your hand because it's it's obvious what those details are supposed to be. You're not kind of interp interpreting textures and trying to implement detail that's mm. not there. You also yeah. don't have to mm. put extra effort in to make it more interesting with the painting because there's so much detail on there that it's going to be interesting. It's all there for you to just paint yeah. that. Like, it's not like I think. You go down a dangerous like road of ending up with a lot of boring miniatures if you start criticizing that, oh, there's too much detail on that. It's too interesting. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Just for the sake of it being easier to paint. We want cool models at the end of the day, right? So, yeah. 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 And ultimately, I mean, I'm personally biased towards I love the aesthetic, mm -hmm. right? And so like I don't think I would be as enthusiastic. In fact, I wouldn't do it if I didn't like how they looked. Mm -hmm. And so like I really like how they look. And when I get excited about something, I, I can't help it. <laughs> right? Like, this looks so cool. I just can't help it, right? So it's like, yeah, I, I, I'm just gonna do it. Yeah, if people like it, they like it, right? Um, yeah. yeah, I think if people have a like, if people say they do want to paint an army of it, and maybe that is like you say, the criticism that they're having is, oh, there's so much detail. I think there's other things you can do that we've spoken about multiple times on the podcast in terms of with painting, like James was just saying, the different styles and corners you can yep. cut to get things done quicker. I'd rather do that to get an army full of like models with loads of cool details and stuff than just have an army of boring models because it was quicker to paint kind of thing. And it was also, uh, I discovered as well, it was a loud minority that said that. And typically, you know, the typical video, there's a hundred good comments, there's one negative comment. Oh man, no one likes it. Yeah. Right? That's all you think about. That's that what one I think comment. about. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then the, it's the vast majority. It's like, no, these are great. These are fantastic. I love the detail. I love the, love the way they look. I'm like, okay, good. Yeah. Yeah. What's the current like, um, availability in terms of like where can people go to get it or is there something to back currently or is that done is the funding done now or? so we are there was there's two campaigns the first one which is all done and fulfilled was mm -hmm. just a set of miniatures right mm -hmm. I say just a set it was, it was many it was a few hundred mm -hmm. miniatures yeah uh, and the second campaign which we recently did just in this past November mm -hmm. a few months ago uh, it's now reopening so the pledge manager which is the availability to reorder it. Mm -hmm. And so it is a crowdfunded campaign. So the fulfillment of it will happen later, mm -hmm. uh, but you can still order it. Okay. Cool. So by the time this goes out, there should be a link where people could do that. Cool. Uh, if yeah. there is, yeah. then hopefully you've passed that on to us and we can put that in the uh, description or something. Yeah. 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 <laughs> if not, <laughs> check back. <laughs> 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 
Just a quick one, we wanted to remind you that you can get your own miniatures painted by the world-class team here at Siege Studios. We offer a variety of painting levels and services to meet your needs and budget. Whether you want a centerpiece character or an entire gaming army, we offer well above the industry standard of quality and experience. You can learn more about our services and get a quote now at siegestudios.co.uk. And just for you podcast listeners, you can get 5% off of your first commission using the code PAINT5. Back to the show. So painting yeah, miniatures. Yeah. You have over the years had uh, an explorative journey. Let's put it that way. I think you know I've, I've seen lots of posts of you painting with your son. I think that's you know it's, it's, it's I think it's absolutely phenomenal that you got your, your your children into it. I think it's brilliant. I think I'd be worried if they didn't like corn on didn't, and didn't, weren't painting miniatures. But how awkward would that be? <laughs> yeah, you have a child and they don't like. I'm a loyalist. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're just like they have to like sit you down and be like, I just have to say. I think I love ultramarines. That's my <laughs> that's my favorite. That's my favorite. Or what if they said right. Tau? Can you imagine? <laughs> hey, that word Tau I'll be spoken in. The <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but I, I, I tell us a bit more about you and miniature painting because I know you've got massively back into it a little bit recently, and obviously you're you're doing more painting with, with your children and your son and stuff. So just tell us a bit more about your. You, Tell us about your miniature paint. It's something that we haven't, I haven't, I haven't ever seen you talk about a lot. And I'd, I'd love to find out more about your thoughts. And now we'd, we'd love to know a bit more about miniature paint and your perspective on it. Yeah. Uh, okay. So the first time painted miniature 16 years ago, right? When I first got into it, no experience whatsoever. And so here I'm making these like painting tutorials on like, they still exist, right? Painting a chaos black legion, right? And oh, so cringe because it's like <laughs> paint right in the pot. Okay, like thick paint, right? <laughs> and it's like you're doing the shoulder pad and the lighting is horrible. So like it's globbed on. <laughs> it's, so, it's so messy. And it's like, yeah, this is, this, is how you, this is how you do it. Like I was learning as I was going, right? Uh, and because of my, my wargaming experience has been in reverse. So mm -hmm. it's like many people grew up with it. I didn't grow up with it. I discovered it when I was 23, mm -hmm. right? So uh, I'm learning as I'm going as an adult, right? And I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> everything I'm doing on camera is for the first time. <laughs> so, yeah. So everything I'm painting, I'm actually painting for the purpose of playing, right? And it was always for work purposes because it's for content and because we have the store and it's for making content. So it's, all right, we've got to get this. Here's a new army. We've got to get this done in this many days so that we can get the video out. Mm -hmm. And there wasn't an enjoyment. There wasn't actually a hobby aspect mm -hmm. of painting miniatures. It was always get this done really quick so that you can get the video up. And there was my own own pressure applied to myself to get it done, right? Uh, and I burned out doing that, yeah. right? So I did not enjoy it, actually, to be absolutely frank. Like, no, I didn't. I don't know how many minis I painted. Hundreds, probably, right? That's not many in the careers of many, right? A miniature painters, that's nothing. It's right? still a lot of models, 100 models. It's, yeah, like, okay, one of the times, like, I'm going to paint 100 cultists in a live stream and take eight hours and, like, factory, like, doing all this stuff. Like, oh, that's when washes became brand new. Like, just ba <laughs> basically <laughs> dipping, <laughs> dipping all the models. Good, there's a fast way of doing this. Dip, 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 dip. <laughs> right? But it's, yeah, so it's just, I stopped for years. Stopped mm -hmm. painting miniatures, right? And, and But I could always appreciate the miniatures. In fact, massive excitement and enthusiasm for painted miniatures because I could appreciate the time and the effort and the work and the talent that went into it. And so a lot of the content surrounded, hey, look at the awesome thing you painted, James, mm -hmm. right? And you painted Joe. I don't know if you'd be saying that. I think I would have been on the case of when you said if you'd got it and it wasn't any good and we would have put <laughs> away. I think that would have been one of mine, probably. Yeah. It's funny, actually. I'm sure you picked up on this, Joe, but it's really funny because on the episode that we done last week, we were speaking about how the hobby has changed for us over the years in the sense of making it like more relaxing now. We've had this sort of personal journey of trying to make it more of a therapeutic thing rather than just painting for the sake of painting and joe had a really similar that was like almost an out. exact story to what you just said where it's yeah. like i was only painting with this like pressure that i was putting on myself i don't want to rehash everything i was saying but like yeah. it's a very similar thing and then having this sort of epiphany not too long ago and being like oh this hobby thing is supposed to be fun actually oh, right the hobby <laughs> it's actually a thing right yeah. and so i know exactly what you mean because it was recent for me too yeah right like in the past year yeah. Like, dang, yeah. it took that long, right? So, yeah. So, what are you, so what happened to make that switch in the last year or so? To what, what put you in the mindset of like, oh, I do actually need to, I could actually enjoy painting or I do actually need to have fun painting? So, it was actually, it was actually Ravage Star. So, the first 
box set came back from the factory, which was wild and surreal to have this actual physical product that we had made, mm -hmm. right? And so it was a sample, which was a finished sample and 72 miniatures in this, in the box set, right? So I brought it home and I was just bringing it home to look at the models, to examine them. It was actually my kids mm -hmm. who came up and like, dad, can we paint those? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? And so it's like to a hobbyist who has kids, that's like a dream come true, right? <laughs> to me, in my mind, I was like, oh man, I don't know how to paint. I don't know how to show them how to paint. I, <laughs> I was like panicking in my brain, right? So I'm like, and but at the same time, fully appreciating that opportunity, I'm like, absolutely, we can paint them. Let's paint them. <laughs> and so, you know, I go to the, the store and I get some contrast paints because it was the easiest. Yeah, yeah. No experience required way best way of like getting into painting without knowing much. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I'm like, all right, let's, how do we do this? Right. Looking, looking at certain videos. It was actually, um, it was a slap chop videos. Right. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, how do, I'm basically a, a noob when it comes to painting minis, man. Like I got to look online and see his, like, his slap chop. <laughs> that actually look, doesn't look too bad. Like the minis look pretty decent. Right? Yeah. They look pretty good. And it's not hard. It's not overwhelming. Right. Cause there's how many different techniques. Like some techniques, you say the name of the technique, and I'm like, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Right? But when you say dry brushing, it feels like, okay, yeah, I've dry brushed stuff before. You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Overbrush, it's probably 50 50 if I were to guess the, d describing it correctly. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> right. And, you know, there's like, you know, washing and whatever, it's like kind of more basic stuff. But then, like, wet blend, oh man, okay, yeah. You're just like winning the lottery if I actually get it right. right? <laughs> it feels like a very complicated technique, right? In my mind. Anyway, yeah, right? yeah. So I'm okay, all right, all right, slap chop. All right, that's the way to go. And so that's what we did. So, you know, brought them home, uh, primed them black and did a zenithal highlight. Oh, oh he's getting yeah. technical. Oh, he's getting technical. Right? I remember from the video, right? Um, and it was, that was actually kind of cool, right? Just did it with a rattle can. I'm like, all right, get this angle right and you know, do this and I'll look at it upside down. Okay, that looks kind of neat. And, and then someone told me that, you know what, Dave, if you do like a dark gray and then you do a white on top of the dark gray, it actually looks a little bit better. I'm like, I'm learning along the way. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> this is so much fun. And so it like, it built, there's like these building blocks of like enjoyment and it was unlocking the enjoyment of the hobby in my brain, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of the, the association of, oh man, that was hard work doing that. All oh, this yeah. drudgery of painting all this like a hundred minis and like five it's days. The, the, the pressure was off, right? The pressure was no pressure. Yeah. It yeah. was zero pressure and an equal time with my kids. Yeah, that's the best thing. And that yeah. was like an emotional checkmate. It was like, it's like the paint gods were like, we'll make you like it. Yeah. <laughs> we'll use your children. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, okay, fine, checkmate, right? And so we're all, and here, do I not find, okay, actually the number one thing was, it was encroaching on the house. So I'm like, where do I paint in the house? Man, hobbyists go through this. This is the thing people go through. There's like a, like a base, like in the corner of your basement. Like you can only do there. You can make a mess there. It doesn't matter. <laughs> or in the garage. Or, like, yeah, or in the garage. Yeah, right? like yeah. But it like, that was impractical, right? Because like you want it to be like in the heart of the home, really. is where yeah. you would, That's the ideal place, right? And so that was a conversation with my wife. <laughs> because like that's, that's really, it's, it's, it's symbolic of, the heart of the home, right? And so like that's, we are inside her heart, essentially. You know, <laughs> with the decorations everywhere, everything's nice and orderly. Exact opposite of what I am. <laughs> so, so here's the dining room table and everything's set up and like, and it was, <laughs> that was, it was like the paint gods, like, say the kids, that's the reason. <laughs> like, hey, I spent a lot of time with the kids. <laughs> it's family time. <laughs> Please let me paint here. <laughs> but it was like, okay, all right, you know, fine. All right, let's, let's paint here on the tabletop. Uh, and it was great. And do I not find that because it's, it was out in the open, when family would come over, they'd be like, hey, what are you guys doing? Like, I'm just painting minis. Like, can I paint? Yes, you can. <laughs> and so, so that's how you got it all painted quickly. You got family, yeah, you got family yeah, yeah. to paint it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Why have I not thought of that? Like, yeah. Dad? Yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. The right. key to less pressure on painting is get other people in your family that's to right. help you with the, the painting. Yeah, I do quite a, enjoy the irony that you'd been doing it for like 15, 16 years and you didn't have a hobby set up at all. And you're like, you're like going back to day one for everyone else of like, how do I start? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And so, and then I realized it was it really, it's a twisted irony because like as, as a content creator, as a, as an influencer, there's this, you want to be relatable, 
Yeah, yeah. Right? And so the most relatable thing is to be a new person because majority of viewers, majority of people watching are new mm-hmm. or are the most inexperienced. It's actually rare that there's an expert. That is rare. Mm-hmm. So when yeah. I see dudes like you who are gods at painting, it's like, <laughs> if only one day, right? <laughs> I could spend a million hours doing it. Then yes, maybe, right? But no, it's like, okay, this, okay. So I'll just share my progress online. I'm like, hey guys, check this out. And they're like, keep going, Dave. Yes, 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 yes. More, more, more. I'm like, awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was just so much fun. And it, like, it was genuine, it was genuine enjoyment, right? And so then I would go to conventions and, uh, you know, look around. And uh, it was Byron. It was Artist Opus. So I, said, I, I met him at the, in person for the first time at UK Games Expo. He was doing demonstrations. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Right? And you, you know him for years. Like, I'm yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, And when you, when you do, when you're, when you're practiced at not just demonstrating, but the articulation mm-hmm. of explaining the techniques to new people, mm-hmm. you get very practiced at making things make sense. And so good half hour. Yeah. I was watching him just dry brush, which is, in my opinion, the most basic of basic techniques for a brand new painter. Do you know what one of the things that I, I think that, like the way that he teaches doing a very, what, what is considered and stigmatized, a, ne- a not such a good painting technique and that it's, it should just be for beginners. Like, I think it, like the one thing I would say is obviously from working together with him and, and from, from obviously what he does with series D and obviously the, 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 you know, the tutorials and things that he does, I think it really completely eradicates that stigma of it being this thing that's like, oh no, oh no, it's, it's not that, you know what I mean? Like we always say that techniques and a, 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 like the way of painting something, they're tools for a job and like you have different jobs that require different tools, you know, and, and it, it's really broadened the horizon on what you can do with that. I think a lot of people, un, un, unbeknown and sort of like, didn't really realize that you could do so much more with it, if that makes sense. Um, and I think he's really helped with that. So it's, yes. good that it's, it's good that it's lit that fire in your belly to do more as well, which I think is really the good thing about it. And I'm so glad you said that because that's what he said. He said, dry brushing is just simply a technique. Mm-hmm. It's not good or bad. It's not right or wrong. It's just a technique. I'm like, Duh. <laughs> yeah, totally. Of course. It's just a technique, right? And I saw the stuff that was dry brushed and I'm like, dang, that's good. Mm-hmm. That looks really good. Right. And just com- completely mesmerized. And then here's the kicker, right? He's like, would you like to try Dave? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I do. Right. And so I was doing it. Uh, and I was painting Ross from Faux Hammer. Yeah, like, yeah. He had a 3D printed head. Of him, so like a bust, like a mini bust, <laughs> and you look like Russell Crowe <laughs> from, from Gladiator. Ross wishes that he looked like Russell Crowe, yeah, <laughs> right. And, <laughs> and like it actually kind of looked like it, right? I'm like, and I said that to him, I'm like, yeah, it kind of does look good. And so I was like, just like dry brushing his cheek. <laughs> I was just having so much fun. Uh, and and then you know, the next convention I saw him at was Nova Open. He was doing the same thing, and again for another half hour watching Byron just do the demonstration, learning more. I'm like. And then in, in tandem with like at home painting. So I'm like, okay, dry brushing. Yeah. Maybe slap chopping. Uh, and kind of adding the different tools, techniques to the tool belt of dry, of uh, painting. And it was just, okay, now, now I'm a hobbyist yeah. who is hobbying and not like the majority of the hobbying isn't on camera. Right. It's just, it's just, it's just fun. It's like, Hey, let's, let's paint. Let's just paint. Yeah. It's- and, and, Go ahead. Yeah. No, sorry. I was going to say, just jumping on the dry, dry brushing thing and how it's like stigmatized. And, and we've spoken, not necessarily the same things, it's not a technique, but like how painting styles can sometimes be, um, ha- have like, I don't know, stereotypical things to them when there's actually a lot more you can do. So like mm-hmm. we talk about um, people wanting to do like a more grim, dark painting style. I think that's often associated as like quick, dry brushed, but like, maybe not as clean and refined as the dry brushing that you're talking about, um, weathering, just like weathering powders and stuff like that. When actually, when you really look into what grim dark style is, we just had the painting showcase go up um, this week sisters. or last week, uh, the Sisters of Battle. That's, it's just the grim darkness of it is just the color scheme, the color palette. The painting style is still there. So I think there's a lot... What I'm getting at is these things that people say, and sometimes you often associate them with one thing, like dry brushing. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's only for 
um, beginners or it's only for scenery or it looks like textured or something mm -hmm. or, or, or with uh, grim dark it, there's always more there yeah. and I think yeah. it's cool that and it's like you're saying with, with when someone's a good teacher and they can explain that properly yep. it can really you can unlock it really yeah. unlock something for you yeah yeah and yeah. the thing too like this this is like the, the probably the biggest thing biggest like discovery unlocked right for the enjoyment was I was painting with my son Ryan he's nine years old Okay. And he's, we're painting the Ravage Star minis mm -hmm. back, going back to that for a minute. I was painting one model, right? And I was doing the slap chopping, keeping in the lines, trying to be perfect, <laughs> right? And like <laughs> half done this one mini. I look over, he finishes, I kid you not, it was 10 models. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. And he's just, I learned quick. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then, and it's funny. <laughs> I love it because like his words were, <laughs> What's wrong, Daddy? Just paint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bottle. Oh, God, yeah. oh man. Do you, do you know one of the things? That's like I'm one so of the, happy to hear that. It's like one of the most wholesome things. Like to to, I think even more so just than just painting, but just sharing those memories with him as well. Like it. Correct me if I'm wrong, but like wargaming and miniatures and that's like it surrounds you. Like with what you do, obviously, with any wargaming. So. I'm assuming, obviously, and this correct me if I'm wrong, but obviously Ryan's been surrounded by that as he's grown up, obviously, and you know maybe going to the bunker or whatever, blah blah. But having those real personal moments between you and him, where it's like it's just father and son just painting some models, it's like they're memories that it, that he's always going to have, if that makes sense, you know. And I think if you're enjoying it from the perspective of like I'm painting miniatures, I'm re reigniting that fire of actually enjoying painting models while sharing that with with him and then he's having these memories that he's always going to have i think i think that's just a really nice way of kind of like you getting back into that side of the hobby that you've been in for the last 16 years mm -hmm. and giving him those early moments of his painting journey through doing it with you you know i think that's the that's the really cool thing about it and i suppose it's quite special as well that he's starting out and you're almost starting out at the same time because i was going to ask initially if you maybe regretted not getting into the hobby side of things sooner but i suppose in a way it's kind of perfect timing right? it's perfect timing yeah yeah happened when it meant was meant to happen right yeah yeah exactly yeah 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 that's crazy I, I think like also we were talking i didn't actually realize that you didn't you said you discovered warhammer and got into warhammer and tabletop gaming when you were around 23 yeah. so i i didn't realize that and we were chatting briefly just before we started recording i was saying how um emotional warhammer and painting can actually be and it seems like a silly thing to say on paper but when you really look into it, it's there's a lot of like nostalgia attached to it, childhood memories, just emotion in general, and and bonding moments with friends or family or whatever. Um, so what I was saying, given as an example, was like going to Warhammer World for the first time and seeing these things that I connected with when I was eight years old, mm. and then being twenty five and seeing them and connecting with them again. Obviously, you didn't necessarily have that. You didn't have those connections as a kid, but now you're getting to experience your son having those things at first. So he'll get those moments as it goes forward, and it just continues. It just keeps going. Uh, I think it's a really cool example of how everything can. I don't know how emotional and emotionally invested you can get. How important yeah. it can be. It's yeah, like a bonding exercise. Yeah, it's it's interesting. It's like I didn't get to experience it as a kid. But I get to unlock the inner kid and be the dad that does it for my kid, mm. right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so I've had a look at the stuff you've been painting. I'm just going to say this: I've had a little bit of espionage looking into you've been painting. I had a quick. <laughs> he does this. He goes for everyone's Instagram. Oh, he does the stalking thing, doesn't he? Uh, uh, well, if if Dave hadn't already mentioned scrolling all the way back through our Instagram, I'd say uh, that uh, I'd mention this as an important thing. But apparently, I guess everyone's everyone's <laughs> just stalking everyone on the Instagram. Now, is so. no, I, I, I'm being serious, Dave. Like yeah. you, 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 you've been painting really well. Like stuff you've been painting is really come on. Like as Thank in from when like the first. Obviously, like you paint your first one, and we've all had it. We're like, oh my god, that's my first model, and you're like, I'm really proud. But why doesn't it look like that? It's that it's that Homer Simpson barbecue moment, you know? Like, you know, <laughs> but like, but like, um. You know, like it, seeing the stuff you've been doing and can, and you've really stuck at it as well. So like, I've got to give it to you because like for not for not really having a fire in your belly for that side of it for 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 some time, obviously because of all the things like you were saying about producing like hundred cultists and all that kind of stuff. That's that's a work thing, you know. That's a get it done. We've got to play games, blah blah. But it's it's really wholesome and good to see that you know you've really stuck. You've got that fire and it's it's stuck. And I'm and like 
especially you've got that really light, nice overlay of it being, I'm getting back into it. I really, I'm starting to discover things, enjoy things again and learn new techniques and get better at doing them. And this, whilst also doing it on the thing that you've created from the thing that you love, you know, like I think it's just the, the marry up is like, is like, it's crazy. Like, and how, how, how connected you are to it. Um, and kind of like new models now that you probably produce, you will be like, Oh, I want to paint that. Like a, Oh God, how good is that going to be to paint? Like having that connection to it and now being able to do it both ways is, is a really, really cool thing as well. What do you think has been like the, the, the biggest jump for you? I know you've obviously said that like sitting down in bar and doing some tuition, obviously on dry brushing and stuff, but what, what stuff on your own, just from sitting at home, painting, painting like your own stuff, like with, with your son, like what, what, what have been moments for you that have really like made you go, oh, I'm really happy. I'm really proud of that. What, what things have you learned from doing, from why you've been painting? I painted this, uh, world leaders contempt or dreadnought uh, and there was this fun brush flicking technique with the blood <laughs> right and i was like come on are you kidding me this is so much fun Otherwise, <laughs> the most on-brand answer we yeah. Have, yeah. Because i liked when i was flicking the blood on the world like, eater model <laughs> like let make this goofy reel doing it right like i'm gonna add some technical pain <laughs> And I was legit just enjoying every second of it, right? And it was just, it was, it was like slap chopped, right? And it was clean and like, but it's not done. No, it's not, <laughs> it's not done. <laughs> and I made this goofy and, and the, uh, and this is, a, this is a shout out to, it was one I think Kip, Kip Bash guy, let's go with that one, <laughs> right? And so he, he messaged me, he's like, uh, cause he designs, uh, you know, he does like add on parts, mm -hmm. right? Uh, from what I've seen from his Instagram, because yeah. we're always scrolling, looking at things. I haven't seen it. <laughs> what was his first post? I wonder. Yeah, it was first post. <laughs> <laughs> and so he's like, "Yeah, I can, I can design an arm, right? You know, we're doing this. What would you, what would you want, Dave?" I'm like, uh, "Good, did world eaters or instantly." I'm like, "No matter what it is, as long as it's world eaters <laughs> themed, it would be fun, right? How about like his claw? He's holding a dude, and he's just like, you know, he's like doing this to a blood angel, and and so it's like." Oh no, Dave. <laughs> oh no. Now here's the thing though, because when you, it comes to- You a, said it now, come on. When it comes to blood angels, I love blood angels, right? I, I but Come on, Sons of Sanguinius. If you're going to be chaos without being chaos, it's going to be blood angels. Yeah, damn right. <laughs> That's right, okay? Especially flesh terrors. Yeah. Okay, they're more chaos than iron warriors. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> so yes. And so I want this. And then so I, I named the, the post like, I painted a blood angel, right? Because he's holding like this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that was fun. Like yeah. just, just doing that. So just little moments like that where, when am I going to be flicking some technical gore paint, blood for the blood god on a model in that moment? Yeah. That's when I'm going to be doing that. And that's when I'm going to remember and share that story on a show like this. <laughs> right? <laughs> Definitely. Right. So, so, so uh, is that continuing? Like, so you're now looking at stuff. Like, this is a really the thing I really wanted to ask you is like, about, especially about your paintings. Like, are you, are you looking at your stuff and going, right, I've done that. That's where I'm at. Like, are you now looking at, uh, looking at it and going, right, I want to do more of that. Or are you looking and going, I want to do make it better than that. Or whatever? what's your approach now when it comes to painting models? Are you just, are you still going, I'm just having loads of fun and I just want to just flick, flick technical paint at it. Or I want to, you know, just get it to this, but what, what's sort of like, where do you see like your painting going and what do you want to do with your painting? Good question. Okay. So I would answer it this way. I love plastic. I love the models, James. Like, you know, this is true, right? I just, and so opening a new box and smelling the plastic, right? It's, it's, it's one thing. It's, it's a different thing. It's a different thing to taste the plastic, right? So now that I have a taste for painting, mm -hmm. oh, it's, it's unlocked. <laughs> I can't go back, right? And so what do I want to, I want to do everything now. I want to, I want to, I want to airbrush. I want to know how to airbrush. <laughs> I don't know how to airbrush yet, <laughs> right? Because seeing it, you know what? Okay, this goes back to the fear. So afraid of making mistakes, yeah. right? It's like, um, that's why the half model and then the 10 minis beside me, the Brian's <laughs> like, so afraid to like paint outside the line, mm. which is insane because everything's chaos. Like, why would I be afraid <laughs> of that stupid thing? But it's not. <laughs> it's a normal human reaction to be afraid to make mistakes and especially to showcase it, right? Mm. And so I'm like, all right, Let's, let's adopt some fearless painting here. Let's just, who cares? There's no such things as mistakes when you're painting minis, right? You're just paint. Just paint is the answer. Yeah. Right? So I'm saying this to you, like you don't know. No, like, no, no, no. Like, <laughs> I'm discovering it. It's I'm so good. excited it's to a, share it. Right? It's, it's a really good point because we, we've consciously made uh, a decision on previous episodes to 
make sure we air out anything that we viewed as a mistake that we did and be completely open about not just like obviously on Instagram and things it can everything can be polished and everything can look nice and you can't don't show anything that's ugly and, and stuff like that so we talk a lot about like oh I did this and I wasn't happy with it so I didn't know what to do and uh, and I think a lot of the listeners have heard that and makes them feel a little bit more okay about when it happens to them or and, and things like that so yeah, that's, that's kind of the purpose of this podcast is us sort of unpacking our thoughts on projects that we've done and trying to think of how we can improve so that we can sort of pass that knowledge on to everyone else yeah that makes sense i yeah. love that i love that so much <laughs> so much guys thank you for doing this show <laughs> <laughs> it's meant for people like me <laughs> <laughs> honestly right because like i when you're not engaged in that type of stuff all you see is the awesome stuff Mm -hmm. And so the perception is everyone knows how to paint. Everyone knows how to paint well, mm -hmm. and I don't know how to paint. Mm -hmm. Therefore, that's scary, and I'm afraid of it. Yeah. But when reality is, vast majority of people are just experimenting, making mistakes here and there. Even the top painters make mistakes constantly, which yeah. I never knew. It's <laughs> constant because they don't talk about. They talk about it. I mean, I'm, I met with a, met with a model with a hairdryer before. So, so, <laughs> yeah. so. It's kind of that thing as well. Of like, regardless of where you are on that journey, you're always going to look at your stuff and think, "Oh, I could have done this better." It doesn't really. It, it's not actually relevant how well the model was painted or how much experience you have. I don't think that ever leaves you. Even if you painted ten thousand models, you're always going to have that. You're going to finish a project and you're like, "Oh, I should have done this a bit better," or you might still learn something you might not be making as like massive strides as you did when you were starting out and you're learning so fast but i don't think that ever really leaves you either even if you're super deep into painting you know what that tells me that tells me it's actually very human to feel like you're not doing it good enough mm -hmm. of course it is. normal yeah. experience yeah yeah in fact if you think you are doing it good and you can't improve <laughs> you're probably right? like not. The, that's the yeah. illusion right yeah yeah so, so since you picked up the brush and started doing it again and started getting back into it have you made any mistakes that you regret like what 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 things have you have you are there is there anything that you like oh actually i wish i'd done that instead when i started or is there anything that you've that you've like made a mistake on that you think oh i should have done that or is there anything like that at all that in your experience since you got that fire again i think it's every time i learn a new technique so uh even slap chopping mm -hmm. right even heck even just this you could use two paints instead of one <laughs> right you can use like the dark gray and the white it's every time Mm -hmm. So it's not, uh, so in that, that's an example, right? And so another one was uh, the flicking. Let's go back to that for a minute, right? The flicking of the gore. In my opinion, I could have gone back and done less, mm -hmm. right? Because I put too much, but in my opinion, it's like, it, now there's some dissonance there. It's like, you can never have too much gore. <laughs> I've just got this right? vision of you. This like, internal like, conflict. I've got, I've got this vision of you like with red lit background, just like, hang on. <laughs> so I've made loads of blood on the model. So it's like flicking back up at your yeah. face. <laughs> <laughs> I'm finally done. Right? But it's but in that case, it was like a, a it was like a less is more. It's like the gore is only so awesome because you can actually see it. Yeah, and it's not like caked in the gore, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah, so yeah. I've still got that vision. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah. So I would say like yeah. It. I would. In in fact, now it's come to the point where I actually expect. I expect it. So it's no matter the thing I'm engaging in. Um, the illusion of making mistakes is okay. I accept it as an illusion, even though I feel the feelings of it. And I'm going to paint and do whatever it ends up being. And then whatever I see afterwards, I know that I'll review it and be like, ah, okay, next model. I'll change that a bit. I'll go it's a little. It's a really good approach. Yeah, best yeah. yeah. thing to do. Yeah, I yeah. go in expecting it. Right? We're, we're, I always say when, like, when teaching classes or when doing one on ones and stuff like, I always say there's a really good acronym, which is the word fear itself. Um, and if you watch the podcast, you probably know this one anyway. But if you're not and you haven't, then it breaks down into false expectations appearing real. So, so your false expectations of how the model is going to turn out yes. or what you're going to do to it or the mistakes you're going to make or if I add this, is this, this is going to happen. Like you won't know until you try or you do it. Right. And I think that's one of the beautiful things of experimenting and not letting fear stop you from trying stuff. Yeah. So you're a perfect, that's a perfect thing for you. It's like what you're saying. You're just like, I'm just painting. I'm just enjoying it. And those things happen naturally and you learn from those and you can do exactly what you said. Look back at the previous thing you've done reflect on it so then the next thing you do you won't have those false expectations you'll just approach it and you'll learn from that each time you do it which i think is brilliant so keep doing what you keep doing what you're doing as well big news tickets are now on sale for the siege studios painting classes for 2024
For over eight years, we've been running in-depth, hands-on classes across the UK, which has allowed us to create the perfect learning environment for improving your painting skills. With a variety of topics available, all our courses are taught by senior artists and feature practical demonstrations in a relaxed environment that welcomes interaction from you, discussions on theory, and an open Q&A session so you can ask that burning question you've had on your mind. You can even bring your models for feedback. To book now and reserve your place before tickets set out, head over to siegestudios.co.uk forward slash shop. I'll see you on a class scene. So something we discussed on a previous episode was this sort of theory or hypothesis, perhaps, that everyone talks about there being like three pillars of the hobby and that being the gaming, the painting and the law. Yeah. But we sort of thought, oh, there's maybe this fourth one, which is collecting, which when we thought of, I don't think we quite realized what a perfect example of that you and your channel is. But <laughs> how I, I want to know. Have you ever been into collecting like any other things or was Warhammer like the first collector's thing or did, did the collecting get you into Warhammer? Was that more appealing than the gaming? Because you've got a huge collection of, of chaos armies and miniatures. Just miniatures in general. Yeah, miniatures in general. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, what do I say right now? <laughs> you say I can still integrate into society. <laughs> um, yeah. So first off, yes, collecting is its own hobby. Yep. As a fact, I agree. Mm -hmm. And thank you for validating. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? I, I got to say, I never knew that existed within me until I started collecting miniatures. Right? Mm -hmm. And just never had an opportunity to really collect something to that degree. And it just evolved over time. And this is, this is you know, I, I loosely say it's my collection. Mm -hmm. Right, because it's I view it as the community's collection, mm -hmm. right? It's just like, and especially because there's so many, I mean, hundreds of artists contributed to it. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's that too, and I see collecting is an exercise in collaboration. That's how I view it. Mm -hmm. And so when I see something that excites me, which is many things, especially chaos, <laughs> the you know when you meet people, and especially Warhammer, it's like, oh, what army do you collect? Oh, okay, yeah. For me, and when I see their models, is how much do you want for it? <laughs> <laughs> I kid you not. Like, this is what I say, right? Like, and like, whether I have the money to buy it or not, that's inconsequential. I just don't <laughs> figure out a way to get it, right? So, uh, and you know, most of the time, people are like, oh, no, 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 I have spent too much time doing this. I'm, but on the rare occasion, like, well, okay, funny you should say that. And I would be, and as soon as they become serious, I become serious. <laughs> 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 right and then i'm like okay yep i know i'm automatically going to agree with the idea of adding this to the collection because it, it feels like you know the, the more time that passes the more we grow and the more we kind of collect feelings experiences knowledge mm -hmm. the collection is almost like a symbolic representation of that right it's you see different parts of your life through the collection mm -hmm. like i remember that 10 years ago and i remember remember that dude <laughs> painted that one model and I remember that uh, custom service job for Siege. <laughs> and, you know, it's like you, get, you can do that, right? Yeah, yeah. It's almost like a vast sea of nostalgia when you look at it. Uh, and, and, I, and I realized, and it's actually over Christmas time, my wife, uh, Farah, who's the goddess of Slanesh, I've said that, <laughs> I, I said that before I even knew what it meant. <laughs> <laughs> right? I was saying it online, and then <laughs> it was pointed out to me one time, like, hey, you know what that means, right? I'm like, I think I know what that means. Like, Here's what it means, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess it's too late now. <laughs> it's out there now. It's yeah. out there now, it's right? But anyway, she she was decorating the Christmas tree with ornaments, right? And I was looking, you know, every ornament was like carefully packaged, right? Mm -hmm. Placed, meticulous, each one unique, each one representing an experience. Okay. That's her Warhammer collection. <laughs> the Christmas tree is hers. The Chaos Army is mine. It's really just what you care about, what you feel, right? And, and I get it. So now collecting as a hobby, I can relate to, right? And I think we, I think we actually, the more of us can actually relate to it more than we know because mm -hmm. we don't even just really acknowledge it as a hobby. And it's like, well, okay, you may not get Warhammer, but what do you do? Well, I have a garden. Okay, cool. 
what, what plants you got? Are they perennials? Are they annuals? Yeah. <laughs> In fact, they are. Yes, they are. Oh, so you do understand. You do understand the obsession there. Yeah. And so it's, it's really, it's a relatable thing. Right? Yeah. And it's it, just a matter of comparing it to something else that is relatable to, to them. Mm-hmm. Right. And yeah. it's, yeah. It was an interesting thing. We kind of stumbled on it when, when George initially said it about the collecting, because we were, I think we've probably, we've spoken many times about James has got, James's paint collection is insane. James buys every old paint you can think paint. of. It warrants an intervention. Paint, paint, yeah. paint, paint. paint. Like paint yeah. pots. Paint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. For, in terms of like Citadel, Warhammer paints, mostly blood red, mostly R- old, R- old paints. Loads of retro old paints. I, 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 I collect lots of rare paint or older paint and also... I like all the second edition boxes and stuff like that. So, Being yeah. honest, I think collection is generous. It's more of a hoard. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's better. Quite, better. <laughs> <laughs> let, let, let's just let's just say your chaos collection and my paint collection have got a lot of things in common. Yeah, that's yeah, right. yeah. yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. That's, I think we leave it at that. Yeah, yeah. don't say anymore because Ria will kill me. So um, <laughs> yeah, so, but yeah, it's yeah, interesting so. that we'd never really heard people really even talk about the enjoyment of collecting within Warhammer, but it is such a big enjoyment, even to the point of like people don't acknowledge it enough i know you joke a minute ago about george validated it but people don't acknowledge it acknowledge it enough in terms of like if you have a collection of models that you haven't painted yet we all call it a pile of shame <laughs> like we don't even just acknowledge it like yeah i just yeah. like i like having, having the models it. yeah exactly yeah. Just, comfort. It's part, yeah just own it own it you know what i love about that and it's so ironic right because it's like we talk about gatekeeping you know um oh you haven't played oh you're a noob oh, i gotta teach you the rules oh, I gotta go to someone else <laughs> gatekeeping right or you can only do it this way you can only whatever the gatekeeping is right mm-hmm. and then we get past it because we just become more aware of it right and so with collecting the miniatures as opposed to painting that's right they see the collection is like well, how many of those did you paint yourself and it's like well probably less than one percent because i value time with people as well because that's inhuman to paint how many tens of thousands of minis mm. it would literally take lifetimes right so to, to say something like that, which is, it's a common response, which again is an understandable response because things we don't understand, we demonize. So uh, I think the more we talk about it, which is, it's a horde, yes, it's a horde. <laughs> <laughs> it just becomes normal, right? Yeah. Because everyone has a degree of it. You might not have 10,000 models, you might have 10. You're still collecting, it's still the same. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. So that's how I view it. Yeah. yeah. I like it. It's good. We'll, uh, we'll continue to validate collecting more yeah. hammers yeah. as much as we can. There's nothing wrong with my paint collection. I'm yeah, paint. Seal box collection is validated. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that, Reed? Dave said it's okay. Dave said it's okay. <laughs> so, James's hoard of paint is fine. Continue to grow. Bring on uh, the hoard. <laughs> okay. We've got a fun little game that we've prepared. So. This is a, a style of game that you might recognize when I mention it, but it's our own little spin on it in, uh, in the Warhammer sense. So this is called Command, Reserve, Purge. So basically, I'm going to name <laughs> three things, okay. and you're going to pick which you want to command, so mm-hmm. which is your favorite, mm-hmm. which is you reserve is sort of your second favorite, it's okay, and Purge, it's got to go. You've got you've to kill one, it's gone. I see. Okay. All right. Okay. Round one. <laughs> Khan the Betrayer, Abaddon, Erebus. Ah, Purge. <laughs> er- I hate that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Auto Purge. Auto Purge. Uh, and then who are we, who are we <laughs> commanding out of Khan the Betrayer and uh, Good Abaddon? Good luck commanding him. <laughs> <laughs> so he's got to be reserved. And then uh, Abaddon is uh, he's command. He's got to be. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Erebus. I'm, I'm just um, um, Erebus has been fired from the biggest cannon into the <laughs> possibly imagine. Yes. He's gone. Um, I'm going to reserve Abaddon and command uh, Khan, definitely, 100%. Khan is the OG. Joe? Oh, my answer as well. Yeah. Uh, I think I would echo, echo Dave's order of, of things. I think I can't, I, I have to, Abaddon. Abaddon's Abaddon. Come on. Even just from a model's point of view as well. The Abaddon model we've spoke about many times. Oh, if, we, if we're Abaddon bringing model. models into it, then I might change. Well, I mean, there's <laughs> not, I assume there's not a <laughs> different story. Right? A different no, story yeah. You've had your answer. You've had your answer. <laughs> yeah. Okay, next round. I think I get it now. So it's, is it, pl- 
playing or is it lore? I was thinking That's lore. Entirely, like, it's it's entirely, it's just whatever. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, 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 whatever. Yeah, yeah, I went the lore yeah. route. Like, yeah, you can't yeah, control yeah. Karn, right? Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. yeah. However you want to interpret it. Whatever interpret. your favorite yeah. or These favorite. These aren't all going to be characters, by the way. They'll be completely Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. They're different things. This yeah. is a fun game, I like. Okay, next up. Airbrush, a paintbrush, and a dry brush. I mean, we've just spoken about how much you love in dry brushing at the minute. Yeah, I would, I would say. But you did say you want to learn the airbrush. <laughs> you know what? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll see this as a challenge, right? So we're going to purge the dry brush because, uh -huh. because it's harder, right? Mm -hmm. And so I would want to command the airbrush because I know nothing about it. And so that would be a dream of mine to command it. And then I would reserve the, what was the other option? The paintbrush. 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 Just regular paintbrush. 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 Yeah. Do your Just other stuff. It. Yeah. Interesting. It's a good choice. Uh, command paintbrush, reserve dry brush, and purge airbrush. Wow, we're going all different. Yeah. I'm going to command the paintbrush, reserve the airbrush, and purge the dry brush, I think. Yeah. Well, three, different, three different options. Yeah. Okay. Totally different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is a bit of a callback to earlier, but we've got the three pillars. So gaming, law, painting. Ooh. Oh, that's a hard one. <laughs> <laughs> you do that? Oh, we gosh. didn't say it was going to be easy. Dave. <laughs> no, Come on. So hard. <laughs> my mind always goes to purge first, right? Because the other one are the other ones are good. Like, you get to keep them at least. Purge, <laughs> jeez. Ah. Just a reminder, you're on a painting podcast. <laughs> so, <laughs> preferably... Stop, don't steer him, Joe. Preferably we don't <laughs> purge painted. I feel like that might be we'll your, have a job to your go to. <laughs> so, okay, I would have to just echo then what, what has been my experience, because out of those three, it would be lore is the least uh, uh, strong mm -hmm. in my mind, right? So it would be purge because it's like, oh, I don't know what I'm missing, I guess, right? Uh, in, in, in relative terms, uh, yeah, then I'd reserve the. I would actually command the painting and reserve the gaming. Oh, oh wow! Oh, oh. I didn't sway him to that <laughs> answer. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna purge gaming, reserve law, and command painting. I think I'm unsurprisingly gonna match James on that one. Yep, I fair. feel like yeah. Okay, <laughs> you like this one? <laughs> <laughs> command a shadow sun. Far sight. Dark Strider. <laughs> <laughs> Go I on, like, I feel like purging one's well, going to be quite easy on this. Okay. Uh, <laughs> now, just so we're clear, did you just give me three Tau models? <laughs> that did happen. That did happen, Dave. <laughs> Do we have the option to purge all three? <laughs> <laughs> This is that thing where it's like, so do you want to purge? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know what? I would say Farsight, uh, he would be, he's a keep because at least this is a, we speak out of facts sometimes when we don't want to. <laughs> I love the way he's trying to validate his decision. Just in case this gets clipped. He doesn't want this, he doesn't want this anyway. Because he has, he's half decent at fighting. Okay. So that's, and that's respectable. And he's red. And he's red, right? So there's that too, right? So yeah, but yeah, purge, purge for the other two. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can allow, we can allow, we can allow, we can allow, we can allow. You get one double purge, Dave. There you go. Uh, you're going to go, James? Yeah, our Command Farsight. It's a great model, really cool narrative. Um, purge. Uh, I'm going to reserve Dark Strider and purge Shadow Sun. Yeah, I think if I, I don't know too much lore-wise about any of these, but if I was going on the models, I think I've spoken before about how much I love that Dark Strider paint job. Yeah, uh, yeah. For, from the Every Metal team, so I have to command Dark Strider. Um, what was a far sight, and then the other one. Good choice. Shadow Sun can uh, be purged. So you can go into the shadows. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, last one. Uh, so this is in terms of the games themselves: Warhammer Forty K, Warhammer Age of Sigma, or the Horus Heresy. Ooh. Ooh. That's <laughs> <laughs> such a telling. It's so telling, I guess, right? Okay, well, let's let's take the in the state of affairs here, right? Uh I would say Horus Heresy, we gotta command that one. Right? We gotta keep to our roots. That's mm. really awesome. Like no matter what, it's just awesome. 
Mm. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah. cogs are turning. <laughs> I would say purge AOS. Third forty k. I probably I'm going to echo that. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I love both of those settings. I can't. I can't get rid of one or the other. Just got. Yeah. yeah. I don't even think I could. I haven't played AOS or Horus Heresy, but in terms of what I would be most interested to play, I guess I'm going to command 40k, probably reserve Horus Heresy and purge AOS, unfortunately. Question of the week time. Thank you, everyone, for submitting your questions for Question of the Week. If you have a question that you'd like us to answer on the show, please leave it in the comments below on YouTube. Or if you're watching on any of the audio platforms, please fire us a DM on Instagram at Siege Studios. Uh, this week, our question is from Invictus Lampada, who says, how would you suggest transferring an infantry paint scheme to vehicles without them looking too garish? Oh, that's... Uh, obviously, the size of the model is is a lot bigger, typically, in that case, unless you're doing maybe something like uh, a Nogrin to a Sentinel or something like that. There's not too much disparity in size. Um I think certain schemes lend themselves better to being like upsized. Um, if you've got like a very vibrant, maybe almost like a yellow, sometimes like going from a yellow, a yellow like infantry model all the way up to, uh, uh, let's just say the biggest tank, which is the Astraeus, the, the, the Primaris massive Astraeus tank like that. If that's yellow, like it's so visible on the table, it's like crazy, you know? Um, I think one of the beautiful things we take like Imperial Fist as an example is that like section in parts of the model in an alternate in a high contrast color. So for example, like if you look at some of the heresy stuff, um, the models have got like dark armor panels or black armor panels and sections of black on the model. So it helps break up the overall form of the miniature and reduce the high contrast, uh, sorry, reduce, reduce the, the garishness of that bright yet bright color. Um, you can always use a neutral tone for it, or I would based on color three color theory, use a complementary color or a harmonious color to then just break up the overall color scheme. Um, I think that's the way that I would probably approach it if I was doing it, I think. I think one of the things I like that, and I do apologize because I'm going to talk about Tau, but um, <laughs> <laughs> one of the things I like on the uh, Tau Sept box art is that some of the larger models um, have a camo mm -hmm. built into them, like put on them as their main scheme. I think that's quite good in terms of it looks different, but it fits in still, and it maybe breaks the model up a little bit, has, adds a bit of interest on like loads of flat panels and stuff like that. So maybe experimenting with some some camo styles that fit your color scheme. Yeah, work. I, I, that, that works really well. And I, th I think another thing you can also do is like by, by doing weathering as well. Like I think weathering is a really good way of integrating something that's quite, if it's a larger object, you, ex you expect that it would have more interaction with its environment. If it's walking down an alleyway and it's dreadnought, it might scratch one of the walls or walk into something or smash through a building or something like that. So I think there's more likelihood for there to be some serious marking or damage on potential things like that. You've also got the layer of like, how long has it been on campaign and all those kind of things. There's loads of things you can do to add interest to the model and maybe tone down the garishness of an overall color scheme or, or palette on a miniature by using a combination of sectioning, potentially camouflage if it's like got material cloaks, things like that. And then also adding a layer of further depth to it and story with like weathering and things like that. Um, some of the things you've been saying about like dry brushing and stuff, obviously, like, and then some things like, for example, overbrushing or for example, slap chop and things like that. There are loads of ways that you can add tonal variance to the model through just increasing the intensity of the color as well. That, that works quite well by using those techniques. Um, have you, how have you found painting like smaller models and bigger models than the ones that you've done? Do you, have you had any issues with transferring colors or things like that, Dave? I think because I visually to me, anything that I paint, I feel happy about mm -hmm. because I'm painting. Yeah, yeah. That I don't look at it that way. Yeah, no, that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Honestly. Yeah, that's yeah. a. It feels like an advanced question. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think that's a fair point though, because this question implies that you couldn't just use the infantry Could, scheme, so, which so you totally you, can. I'll, I'll tell you one of my honest first reactions to this, and I wanted to give an answer that was that would help them, but my honest initial reaction was, I don't know if I'd think about it that much. Yeah. Because it's just the color of the army, and that's what the color of the tank is. And that's my response. If you're happy enough with the color of the army, yeah. then yeah. But I did. I wanted to give a, a, an answer of what they were more looking for, I suppose, to yeah. aid with that. But no, that's yeah. a fair point. I would also probably sit next to someone who's way better at painting, which is not hard, <laughs> and then learn <laughs> learn from them. Right? Yeah. I'd be like, yeah. hey man, how would you do it? Yeah, 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 and just paint with them. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, it's great. It's yeah. personal preference, though, isn't it? As well, because I mean, some. Some people, even myself personally, I quite like the idea of having like this one big block of like 
the the colors of like your chapter of marines or whatever for example it's kind yeah. of a it's kind of like his own banner in a way isn't it it makes your force quite recognizable from a distance to have that big bright color yeah um, although also if you're doing a custom color scheme custom chapter i think utilizing i mean i remember talking about the original um i forgot what the chapter name is but the original marines that you painted for Sentinels mini wargaming for Forge. that was quite heavily like it almost felt equally uh yellow and green right with the the different more green than yellow it felt like when i if, if i remember just from memory like from memory, yeah. the the tanks and stuff i do remember they had like yellow like, turrets and yellow, yellow yeah, yeah it was like it like wasn't that. like shying away from it it wasn't like here's a full green basically looking like salamander's army it was like there was enough yellow in there yes, to break it up definitely yeah. like the and inside think, of the pauldrons was yellow yeah, and yeah the, things the like that i think green. so if you're doing a custom scheme maybe and that is a worry for you maybe consider that giving yourself that option to use the two colors is quite yeah, good i think definitely okay our little uh, closing segment of the show this is a uh, hobby hacks this is where we share a quick little hobby hack with you uh, to round out the week dave i believe you was just sharing with us a little hobby hack of your own yeah i saw this done and it was super simple and i like that I saw it because I instantly was able to just confidently do it because it wasn't complicated. So one of those scrub brushes where you clean dishes with mm -hmm. those like foam things, you actually just tear out a little mm -hmm. bit of it. And then it's for weathering. Yeah. So it was a darker color and a lighter color mm -hmm. that it was done. So it was like a dark charcoal, dark color, kind of just padded on a bit. You wanted a bit kind of splotchy. And then from a different end of the same little broken off sponge essentially right you get like a lighter maybe like an orange and you put it you didn't cover 100 percent of like the dark you put did more in the middle and just added this nice little kind of weathered rust effect yeah 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 instead of like dirtying brushes and uh in a certain way it was like it doesn't matter how much you dirty the sponge you literally just throw it away after or whatever or clean it or yeah it was just simple yeah it was for uh bigger stuff yeah yeah Yes. Yeah, sponges are a great way of doing it because because the time you'd spend doing all of those little individual dots and trying to be as accurate as possible with a brush, the sponge is a really good natural way of doing it. So you also get that natural that natural texture, texture. from the yeah. from the from yep. the sponge as well that you wouldn't get from a from a paintbrush. I think as well, it's like number one, doing it in that way is obviously a quick way to get it done and looking good. But if you were potentially doing something that you were spending a bit more time on. I think even doing that with a sponge as your initial step, just to make sure you get the randomness. Mm -hmm. I think the the worst thing in the world uh, for me is like trying to make random weathering marks with a brush, and I'm just like thinking too much about it. Yeah. Whereas if you at least do that initial step with a sponge, you'll get guaranteed just like it's really random, and then you can go back in with a brush and do your extra things that you want to do after. So yeah. good, I hate that. Even way. when something is random. Because you've done it yourself. You're like, it looks too symmetrical. I'm like, patterns I'm like <laughs> it looks like I've tried to do it random. Yeah. It doesn't look random. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Uh, well, thank you, Dave, very much for coming on this episode. It's been uh, very, very enjoyable. Yeah, thank All you. of the links in the description below for you. Uh, anything you want to promote uh, otherwise for the channel? Blood for the Bug Guy? Okay. Perfect. <laughs> link, 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 link in the, the description. Link in the description. <laughs> yeah. Actually yeah. put the link to Blood for Blood yeah. God yeah. in the description. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you everyone for listening to this week's episode of Paint Perspective. We will catch you next time.